Hey everybody, today we're going to be going over how to uh, start doing formatting via the LSP in NeoVim. But really this is going to be sort of an avenue for you to better understand what features are available for you from an LSP, how do you configure them inside of NeoVim, and then also it's sort of a stepping stone to be able to understand a little bit more what the possibilities are when you're the one that's in control of how you want to uh, configure your editor, right? So let's let's get started first. We'll, we'll first just open up a file here, and uh, what we can do, right, is if we just had something like goofy like this, our current technology that we've installed and set up for ourselves is all we know how to do is run like equals G to fix alignment. But uh, that's not that great really because what if I want to format this file and then I'm, I'm, I'm looking for like, hey, uh, I wanted these to be on different lines. It's kind of goofy that some of these lines aren't all together. Well, that's where vim.lsp.buff.format comes in. vim.lsp.buff.format. So we can run this function here. And unfortunately for us right now, that doesn't respect sort of our natural uh, or our settings that we had already put in file type. We're going to come how to fix that in a second. But notice that now if I had like this set up here, when I run Vim LSP format, it's at least going to start moving things onto different lines. And maybe it assumes that you really want these on the same line, whatever. That That's okay. But it, it at least is like in the right direction. And different languages have better support for this uh, than others. But you can read a little bit about how you can configure it and what you can do here with vim.lsp.buff.format. And this sort of uh, module right here, this LSP buff, is really important because this is kind of like what NeoVim designed to make be the user-facing uh, functions available to you to easily script. This sort of wraps a lot of functionality, takes care of, you know, checking to make sure that these are valid commands and the right kind of buffer with LSPs attached, with common settings and, and all this sort of stuff. So this these are kind of the functions that are really important for you. Um, you. You can check out a bunch of different options for them. Today, we'll just focus on the buff format one. And so when I call this right now, we'll get the formatting right. And if I moved this here and we ran this again, it's going to fix the formatting. And that's that's good. <clears throat> we could we could do something like vim key map set and we could make some normal mode thing for maybe like space f and then what it could do is it could call vim.lsp.buff.format like this right and we could put this here and we could execute this line and now when i if i push this out and i ran space f we'll format it okay that that's nice um i I'm not a huge fan of this necessarily because I'm more of a, I like it to just format whenever I save. I sometimes sort of compulsively save to get the formatting to happen automatically. Maybe there's better options, but I want to do this whenever I save the file. So fortunately as well, once again, we actually already have something inside of the help that gives you basically everything you need. So let's go ahead and yank this code here and then walk through what's going on. Uh, we can even use here LSP buff format to fix this. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to create an auto command on LSP attach. This is sort of your key configuration entry point for determining what an LSP should do in any given buffer. And what we're going to do here is this callback gets called whenever we sort of attach a file and a language server and we have them working together. Okay, so we get a client first and we might want to do something like this to just say, oh, well, we'll actually, if not client, then return, right? We'll just say if we didn't actually get a client for some reason, then we're going to be done. We're not going to do implementation or completion. Those are coming later. And now we've got this little function here, which this is going to check, hey, does this client actually support formatting? Okay. And if it does, right, if this client supports formatting, then what we're going to do is it says, Hey, I would like to, um, let's actually also really quick. We're just going to disable this one. Cause I, it's kind of annoying me. Um, if, if we support this on this line, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to create another auto command. This one's going to be slightly different though. So notice for this first auto command here, it doesn't have a buffer argument here. Okay. This doesn't exist. This means that this is like an auto command on every single LSP attach event that happens inside of NeoVim. 
This one though, this has a buffer uh, argument here, which says, hey, only do this, only call or listen to events, these buff write pre, so just before we write a buffer, um, only listen to the ones inside of this current buffer. So this makes it so that like if you had a Lua language server set up and then you were writing a Go file, but you didn't have an LSP, you obviously don't want to call LSP format on a file that doesn't have LSPs attached. That would be weird, right? Um, and then this basically here, right? This is still this callback part. So that's this part is should be familiar by now to us in the series. This is going to call just the function basically like we had just written before, right? Except it's also going to uh, describe itself a little bit to say, hey, um, you know, we're going to only run it for this buffer and for this client. Okay, so that's that's all that's happening here. So let's just walk through this one more time. We're going to listen to LSP attach events. If the client supports formatting, then we're going to create a new buffer local event listener, right? Auto command that runs LSP format. So if we do this and then we uh, go ahead and open up NeoVim again, now you'll see, uh, and I'll just set my tab stop here equal to, uh, we'll do four just whoops, uh, to show you that uh, this is what's happening is if I move this here and now all I do is press right, we're going to get the formatting going. So that part's good. I don't really like though that this part is different than how I normally uh, set up my Lua file. So what can we do here? Well, fortunately for us, both NeoVim and the Lua LSP respect the editor config file. So if you make a dot editor config file, uh, this here basically says, hey, for any file that ends with Lua, I want you to use spaces and set the indent style to two. So if we open back up to this file here, uh, this actually automatically set this up already for us with retab and some other quite nice setup. But basically now, whenever I save this, it's actually going to do two spaces instead. So this is one thing to be thinking about and something to consider as you're trying to configure LSPs and how they work inside of NeoVim is think about what like external tools you're going to be using and see if you can describe how those tools should work in like a standardized way. In this case, it's editor config describes how we want files to be formatted. So both Lua language server and NeoVim and like our formatting thing can all read that and agree. So this is one of those things where I feel like NeoVim helps you and kind of guides you along the way to exploring more and learning about other tools, which is pretty cool. So editor config is nice um, and NeoVim supports it. Uh, and that's cool. The 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 last sort of note uh, that I really wanted to make on this here is just don't forget that Lua is also a programming language. So if if you want to do something like you just want to say um, if something like vim.bo.file type, this is like the buffer option. So is the current file type Lua? Then do this. That's okay. Just you can just write code, right? And you can write little functions. And if you want to share functionality between different files, you could put that in somewhere that could be required and loaded back up. You have a, a bunch of options. You don't need to feel like your only thing is like copy pasting something or, um, or, or like not being able to customize it. The point of this is that you can actually write some code to make it be just the way you want. And if you're just going to check whether something is Lua, that's fine. That, that's okay. You don't have to have the most generic solution that solves all the edge cases. You might never open any files besides Lua files. I don't know. I don't know how you're going to use it. So, so just write it and use it for the way that works really well for you. So that's the end of this video. Um, the ad read for today <laughs> is actually from my boy, Kev Naughton Jr. right here. And Kev said, hey, teach. What I want you to do is I want you to pitch your own course. So I'm going to tell you that I have a course on boot.dev, promo code TEAJ. You can go here, go to this, go to learn memory management. It's got like a hundred lessons. I'm going to release a cool thing about this soon too, of me walking through everything. And at the end, we write some garbage collectors. It's pretty cool. I mean, and it's in C. It's a good time. You'll learn something. So anyways, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kev. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.